All right, folks, day 20, 31 days of horror slash 31 days of Halloween. And we have got one of the all-time, like, disturbing psychological horror films ever made on the docket today. From 1986, it is the Spanish cult classic In a Glass Cage. Uh, now, before we get into this movie, this is one of those movies that I've had it on a short list of movies to watch. It's like 2010. So it only took me like six years to actually get around to actually watching it. And it's one of those films where you hear so much about it that you kind of wonder if like the execution can really live up to the expectations. And I think this is one of the examples where it definitely does. This is a very, very, very unnerving film. Uh, one of the best non-traditional horror films, definitely in the 1980s. And a movie that you definitely need to go out of your way to see if you haven't, if you have a strong stomach, I mean, if you can handle it. Uh, because this movie definitely gets into like some really, really distressing, uh, almost uh, sallow esque territory. So if you manage to get through that, you might have a chance to get through in a glass cage. If you couldn't get through that one, I don't know what to tell you. All right, so the film itself. Now, it's a pretty interesting sort of uh, moral uh, come up in story in a way. It's about a guy who was a doctor uh, for the Nazis during World War II, and his thing was he liked uh, doing really, really disturbing things with young victims. We don't want to get into it. And um, basically, even after World War II, he still kind of kept doing experiments and just being a general piece of dookie. And uh, he decides to go live in, I think it's Spain somewhere. He's got a sort of remote village. And he's out there, and he's still torturing and killing people. And uh, one other of his victims that he thought was dead, I believe, it's, it's in Spanish, so the translation could be iffy from the actual diegetic plot, uh, sees him, and the doctor freaks out, and he's like, I'm going to get caught. So he decides to go out and attempt suicide. But there's one little catch to it. Uh, when he jumps off the castle, he doesn't die. It just paralyzes him for life, and he's stuck in um, a, an iron lung. One of those old uh, medical uh, contraptions, the old respirators, you put your entire body in it. So he's completely paralyzed. He has to have this machine, you know, breathe for him. His life is pretty bad. He got what he deserved. So he, he's still kind of uh, kicking along. He's living a terrible, terrible life, trapped in a glass cage, ironically. Uh, but one day he gets a new nurse, and it's a young male. And, of course, I don't think I'm really giving away too much of the plot here when I say... Oh, by the way, this kid, the nurse, was actually one of his younger victims. So you kind of go into there and you're like, okay, well, you know what to expect now. Now it's going to be this kid gets revenge. But oh, no, no. This movie throws a curve at you. See, the, the kid who was the former victim of the Nazi, he comes back as his nurse. He's not really out to get uh, revenge per se. He's actually kind of like trying to follow in his footsteps. So we have this really perverse, like sort of at pupil thing going on where he wants to kind of, you know, carry on all the tortures and terrible experiments he was doing. And of course, you know, this kind of freaks out the, the Nazi doctor as it should. And before long, the, the, the kid, the, the nurse is just out there doing all kinds of just really, really disturbing stuff uh, to where he may even actually exceed his uh, Nazi doctor forerunner in terms of depraved acts. Um, there's like a really, really disturbing scene where uh, basically the nurse kills I believe it's either uh, the Nazi doctor's wife or one of his other confidants. And uh, basically he just kills her and throws her corpse on top of his iron lung and like just leaves it there for days. So imagine how like disturbing that would be, just how completely just horrific it would be to just be laying there completely unable to move with like your spouse's rotting corpse just stuck on top of you at all hours during the day. I mean, that's... That really goes above and beyond, as far as I'm concerned. And just wait until you see uh, the nurse start bringing in the local kids for torture. I don't even want to get into it. It is stomach churning. Um, but like I said, like like Salo, like a, a lot of these movies from the 70s that are really, really just depraved and disturbing, it also works like this because it's a legitimately great film. I mean, this is one of the best psychological horror films I've ever seen. It's effective. It's unnerving. The acting is tremendous. It tells a great story. Uh, it's very artistic. I mean, it certainly passes the slaps test there. And I mean, since this is a movie about Nazism and it's made in Spain, 
I mean, there's probably some sort of, you know, localized political commentary going on, but mm, don't want to get into that. But yeah, it's just a fantastic movie, incredibly well made, super duper shocking. And it's one of those things where if you've been watching just a lot of really like tried and true standard monster movies and slasher films, they all kind of lose their effect. If you want to watch a horror film to make you go, mm, this is really freaking me out, this is what you go to. And like I said, it's certainly not for all tastes. Uh, actually, it's not for everybody who has taste. If you have taste, don't apply. But just if you're into really, really, really effective transgressive art house movies, you need to see this movie. Um, I thought it was terrific. It's one of my favorite unsung uh, genre films of the decade. I'm going to give it four Ghost Reese's Cups out of uh, four. So I'm giving it the full 100% rating. You need to see this movie. If you can stomach it, if not, you can move along because we got plenty of other less effective, less serious, uh, really less interesting uh, B-horror films coming up on the docket, including one tomorrow, which uh, has some really good melting effects. And that's pretty much all I can say about that one. But yeah, we'll get to that one when we get to that one. But for now, In a Glass Cage, directed by Auguste Villaronga. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It is a tremendous, tremendous uh, degenerate cinema masterpiece. I'll say give it a shot if you can. Well, I mean, you know, if you can stomach it anyway.